Welcome, everyone. Better late than never. <laughs> uh, the second installation of our uh, cram sessions with uh, Miguel. I got to say, the, the feedback I heard this week was pretty excited. I hope you guys are excited to kick things off. Welcome, welcome to everyone watching this either now or in the future on YouTube. So happy you could join us. Uh, if you're joining us now live, say hello in the chat. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. We would love to hear, especially for today's stream, your questions, uh, comments. We're focusing on acrylics today. And we have with us the man, Miguel. Tell us about the man. You are absolutely the man. <laughs> uh, we are focusing on acrylic again, right? Because last frame session, we didn't have enough time to go through uh, it all, right? Yep. There's still a few things that we want to talk about it, but we decided that we wanted to split into two or three, depends on you know the amount of questions that will come in today. But last time there were a lot. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about flare-ups, you know, reflections, how to avoid that, and, you know, cool techniques on how to avoid that, actually. I, I did some testing, some dangerous testing. It's good that there's not a lot of people right now for me to say that, but I had to make sure that it was flaming up, right? Uh, don't is, do that at home. Which is yeah. an amazing thing to say, yeah. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not something that you should be doing. But, you know, I try to be intentional and then fixing that for you. So, yeah, that's that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to be as nerdy and detailed as it was last time. We I lost a lot of time just talking about the... Uh, the definition of some things related to acrylic. So if you want to know about that, you go back to the other current section. But this one will be more direct to the application of it. And since I'm here now in Mississauga, I can actually run the laser and, and show you the applications, right? Um, Huge improvement over last time, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so give us your questions. We're here basically to talk. There's not a lot of... Uh, uh, specific kind of subject as normally we had in our webinars you know like we, we were talking about one thing and one thing only this is more to show uh how the acrylics can especially for cutting right this is for cutting specifically and how they they work and how they behave under certain conditions right and this condition specifically and i'll i'll pop in the the camera now we have a Speedy 300, right? So let me go a little bit out of focus so I can show you. There. You have a Speedy 300. And I will be showing, uh, I think, 90 millimeters thick acrylic, 3 eighths of an inch on a wow, uh, 80 watts. Right? So this is literally pushing the machine to the limit when it comes to productivity and ROI and everything, right? We have the rule of thumb that if you're cutting something, you usually do one millimeter per 10 watt of power. So if you are doing above that, there's a good chance that you're losing ROI because you're not as fast as you could be, right? And not to mention, I've been trying to make this thing flare up because it's it was not... <laughs> Even going very slow, it was now flaring up. So I was like, okay, this is good, right? But that's not the point of the conversation. The point of the conversation is, what if you're cutting half an inch? I don't have half an inch acrylic right here with me. That's why I didn't use it. Um, so I have a question from Randy. How to best cut your true glass mirror product? Okay, you gotta be a little bit more specific than that, Randy. Best, you mean what? 
right? It just without its striations. Are you having striations or have reflections? Because today we're going to be talking about reflections. I talked about striations uh, back then and how thick it is. I think it's three millimeters. Is that it? This is the only uh, true glass mirror that we sell, right? That's right. It's all three. It's all three mil. It comes in different colors, but the thickness is three mil across the board. Okay. So yeah. Uh, in if you're having serration problems, the last grand session answered a lot of those. You know, basically you go slower, a little bit out of focus, or you don't use air assist. If you want, use a a, a higher lens, so 2.5, four inch sometimes. There's a few ways to fix that besides just going slower, right? I actually have a, a one of the samples that I was doing here that I went very slow and I don't know if it will show, but it was crystal clear. There was zero striations. I think it was that one. Mirror can um, mirror can be tricky too, just because of the yeah. the uh, the reflective surface. It, it does have a tendency to sort of fog, uh, things like that. But um, oh wow, that does look really really nice. That's the nine mil as well. Yeah, that's nine mil. Cut mm -hmm. on the three hundred, right? Wow. On the eighty yeah. white. So if you are having problems with fogging, a masking tape is the the answer. Now, if it's something in the back, and this is what we're gonna be showing today, if it's far ups that you get those cracks, I, I hopefully I can show you guys one of the examples, and I'm gonna do one that cracks so you can see. I did a lot of testing. Yeah. I, I don't know if you saw it in the, the chat, but he said, yeah, but he's getting major cracks on his. Yeah, exactly. So I actually had to to force a lot of power to get major cracks on these ones. That's on the that's on the clear, the transparent? Yeah, on the clear. Gotcha. It wasn't even major, it was like small cracks. I don't think you guys would be able to see that. Uh <laughs> It's very, very small here on, on my thumb is. There's like a very small crack there. Gotcha. But this is what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Right? So put in your questions and I'm going to start the machine and we can, you know, do it. Sounds good. Um, I want to, uh, just before Miguel kicks off here, I just want to mention too that uh, very much in the spirit of this stream, but also just in all of our streams, I think... Um, Miguel, you would agree that we kind of want to bring a lot more interaction with you guys and a lot more questions into the streams in general. So, you know, hopefully we'll see a lot of questions from you guys, but just, you know, as a, as an overall statement, you know, going forward, please feel free to throw as many questions as you want, either before the stream, uh, you can send them to us or you can send them in the registration form or, uh, during the stream, always, you can interrupt us. You can send something in chat, whatever you like, you know, we're here to hopefully, uh, get to interact with you guys, answer your questions. I mean, this is a chance to, to quiz us both. Realistically, you get an hour with us a week. So, you know, fire away, get as much knowledge from us as you can. Anything actually is not just related to acrylics. Right. Uh, the grand sessions are about acrylics, but your questions can be about anything and we're here to help. Right. So in the camera showing again, I'm going to, going to show you guys, this is nine millimeter thick. So three eighths of an inch That's fairly thick. And very thick, sorry. And this is an 80 watt machine, right? So again, to cut this, we're gonna be pushing limits. There are other types of um, techniques that I could do to cut this faster. One of them, for instance, would be, now that I have it already, let me show you. I have it already focused, right? It is correctly focused. I could, offset negatively I, I could just eyeball it if I want it right but uh, you could do that so you can have a better cut right a faster cut actually not a better cut but a faster cut it is it is gonna chamfer the edges um, a little bit so <clears throat> I would use a 2.5 inch lens I wouldn't be using a 2 inch like I am right now I am actually using the 2H because I want this to go a little bit wrong, right? I want to show you guys what do you have, like what do you do when things go wrong with the acrylic. So, <laughs> good afternoon. Hey Doug. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be using the 2H, and in this case, if I'm cutting inside, there's a good chance that it will chamfer everything. 
right? So I'm going to do the first testing here. And let me show you my screen so you can see a little bit about Ruby. But honestly, we're not using Ruby that much right now because I'm just doing circles. So uh, just to uh, just to clarify also, um, normally the two inch is a pretty good all around lens, but it's because you're cutting something so thick, you're saying that typically you would go for a, like a two and a half or a four, right? Yes. Like, because so it's a nine the, mil. The, the focus length of the, uh, the lens mm -hmm. does not allow for a completely straight cut from top to bottom on a two inch if you're doing 10 millimeters. Right. right? It will chamfer a little bit both at the, the entry point and the, uh, how do you call it? The exit point. Exit yeah. point. Can yeah. I can I just get you to define because if people aren't familiar with that word, when you say it's gonna, uh, like, basically what you're talking about is that sort of that um, you'll see the the bowing out, right? You'll see the um, the the diffusion of the laser essentially because it's not going to be in perfect focus all the way through because it's too exactly. thick. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not going to be a straight ninety degrees cut. You know, it will chamfer a little bit in the entry and the exit point, so you will see kind of, uh it's not going to look that good. So I just chose a spot here in the laser where I want to cut this. And remember, this is not in the right focus. I offset it negatively. And I'm going to use this speed. So it's a very low speed, 0.15%. I think the quickest that I could do without using a 2.5 inch lens was to, yeah, 0.25. 3.25 or something around there that's what cut for me but that didn't flame as much as i wanted it did have reflections but i wanted to actually catch fire and again i i gotta say do not do that do not do that but the the process of cutting acrylic releases a gas that with the the laser it will flame up right so with enough time cutting the same acrylic it will flame up like there's no way around it unless you're doing three millimeters if you're yep. cutting thicker acrylic, it will happen. So because that is uh, inevitability, it will happen unless you have a major extraction system, right? It has to be amazing. Or you have a, a 400 or a 360 that also has a vacuum table under it. And still could happen because there's not enough time for the laser to move and not catch the gas that is releasing from the acrylic. Yes. Right? So... It, it, it is kind of inevitability. It might, you can get better equipment and make it work. But if you're cutting acrylic all day long, it will linger. It will linger. And well, that's what we're trying to do here. Make sure that it doesn't catch fire. Yeah. Right? It doesn't burn the acrylic, doesn't mark it, doesn't break it. And yeah. So, John is happy today. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, Amy. Uh, all right, so I have this the spar setting and the speed setting, the frequency eight thousand. Yeah, honestly, anything between four to ten thousand is fine. Some people even go to twelve. The the frequency doesn't matter that much uh, in regards to the quality of the thing. If we're talking about uh, a quality that is sellable, right? <laughs> Frequency works the best when we're talking about very peaky stuff. And we were not talking about this here. We're going to try to be as general as we can because it's already kind of 15 minutes and we barely even start. So and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did last cram session. These dang cram sessions. <laughs> so in general, frequency, just keep it 4,000 to 8 to 12,000 for acrylics, right? Anything else, just leave as is. 1,000 is good enough for, for cutting frequency. And besides that, I'm good to go. So I'm just going to push the laser, right? And I will make sure that everything is fine. Don't have... Is his arms in the laser? No, no. Oh, that's okay. No. That's me. Yeah. So I'll hit play. And we shall see the laser working. Hey, Mo. So you see, you can see the flare-ups. You can see live. Flaring up, so you see how it flares up, and eventually it's gonna flame, right? It's getting bigger and bigger. The flare ups when it goes through the aluminum. Okay, it didn't. But basically, after a few times, it will flame up, <laughs> simply because the gas is there, right? So if I keep cutting right now, it would do that. 
Yeah. So again, obviously we wouldn't just to make it very we wouldn't encourage that, but we want to show yeah. you how to deal with it potentially. <laughs> so in, in regards to to the chamfering, it's actually decent. You know, you could use that. And it has zero striations, which is also amazing. I don't know if you'll be able to see that because it's kind of light in here, but it has a lot of cracks. And I don't think you'll be able to see it because this camera has no autofocus and I have to manual focus, but it, it, has, it has a <laughs> lot of cracks, right? In the bottom, but it looks amazing top down. So hmm. if like, if you see from, from the top, if the, the customer will never see this in, from the sides, has zero striation right can so i it's um as good, uh, good as it can get when it, when it comes to flame polish edges right but again it took what 12 seconds this is yeah. a lot right 12 seconds to cut a circle is a lot so that's not what we want can i ask you um yeah. uh sorry doug it's the it's the 300 it's an 80 watt 300. 80 watt 300 um, yeah. i wanted to ask so without this one to come across in the wrong way I think there's also, so this is something that um, I know we've discussed with Doug and Randy, certainly in the past um, on the chats, but keep in mind too, when you're cutting the acrylic, there is, well, I want to get Miguel's opinion because he knows better than I do, but there is this balance that you can achieve, I think, between the ROI, like the speed that you're cutting and also the knowledge and expectation of the customer and then also the application. Yes. So yes. if it's going to be a giant sign that's hanging, you know, 20 feet up in the air, like two stories up in the air, and nobody's going to be able to see matter. the striations on the side. Who cares, right? But if it's going to be something that's at eye level or is going to be close enough that people can actually get in and see that it's, you know, cracked or, or striated or there's not that perfect edge, mm -hmm. then that changes the nature of the, um, the trend, changes the nature of the, uh, the thing. And then also if the customer, you know, while I know that you guys are always doing the best you can for your customers at the same time, if they don't know to look for some of those things and it won't bother them, then that's also yep. something to, to take into account, I think, right? I mean, yeah. So now I, I realize that since I'm not in the right focus, I'm inside the material focus, that might be why it's not flaming up. And again, <laughs> this is kind of, this is kind of scary to do. I'm going to, I'm going to go down and now I'm going to be in focus, right? The normal focus when you put it to the surface of the material. So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to go up until the thing falls down. There we go. A little bit. And now I'm going to hit play. Watch the material. Right? And I'm, I, I have my, my hand here on the... So again, flare-ups like crazy. Yep. Uh, this is, all these flare-ups are cracks, right? Yep. Uh, flames. I can already see the flames. It's burning. You see? There's a flame. Yep. Stop. So there you go. I'm yep. not gonna cut this through, okay? So you saw the flame, didn't take much. And this is basically a uh, 80 watt trying to cut, what, maybe half an inch. If you try, this is what you're gonna get. I 100%, this is what you're gonna get. It took 10 seconds and start flaming up like real flames, that just flares, real flames. So now we have a bunch of techniques to circumvent that, right? One of the techniques that I like the most is the wet paper towel. I'm gonna show you later. But before, I'm going to show you the razors, right? Uh, how do you call it? The lifters? I don't know. There's a name for it that you use, right? E either one, I think, is fine. I mean, I've even heard people call them the T's, like, you know, lifters, razors. It's uh, actually Mr. Highvolt mentions it right here, but it's exactly this. So lifting the acrylic off the bed so that that same diffusion that Miguel is talking about happens, you know, further between the actual acrylic and when yep. it hits that aluminum table underneath. Exactly. This is the easiest one and the, probably the cheapest one as well. And it's the one that's going to have the the fastest uh, kind of work, a men work kind of thing, right? That you're going to be handling the material. However, however, there's a there's a catch there is that <clears throat> if you're doing thin acrylics, it's going to bend, right? Uh, with this thick of acrylic, it's going to be fine. But if you're doing with a three mil, it is going to bend and you will lose focus. So if you're cutting the whole sheet, that can be a little bit problematic, right? Uh, up to a certain point, everything you cut fine. And after that, you know, it will go, eh, it's not going to yeah. be as good. So, okay, people are talking. So that way, wet and raise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> <this>. <laughs> Amy's funny. 
Yeah, it's a very slow process, exactly, even at 120 watt. Because, well, 20 mil is almost an a entire inch, right? And in that case, this is the, the thing that Randy's talking about. By the way, Randy is LCD. Um, is that this is ROI, right? He's trying to cut, some, cut something that is almost an inch thick in something that's not 200 watt. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. But it's not going to give you the same returns as if you're using a machine that has 200 watts, like a 500 or 1500 or a 2000, right? Yeah, I don't even know if I should be like showing that. This is from a customer, anyway. Um, <laughs> so I've got the uh, I've got the yeah. um, paper towel video. You tell me when, and we can maybe show some of that. Yeah, stuff yeah, too, but... yeah. Show the laser day paper towel. Yeah, that's pretty good. Sure. Uh, here we go. Sorry, it's my face right off the bat here, but so <laughs> i have been consistently impressed this laser hack i mean laser laser dave's got some amazing stuff but this laser hack of all of them has consistently been like just incredibly 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 useful in our day-to-day -day yeah. applications like this works so much better than it has any right to <laughs> i'm always impressed with how well this works and you can, see, too. you can see that he's using the same laser as I, as I am, but it's going so slow that he had to speed up the videos. There's yep. not many videos that we speed up. So it, it is going very slow to get 12 mil on yes. 80 watt. And there's the T's. There's the pins. And there's, and there's the pins, right? I so, personally, I don't use that much because I'm lazy. <laughs> and, but, you know. I will say before too, like Miguel was talking about purposely making the mistake to, um, to yeah, you can see the the steam coming off there at the Actually, bottom. Actually, this, right? this is a very good uh, part of the video. Can you pause there? Yep. You see how the 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 laser is cutting through, and there's a curve. This is the wave, right, of of the laser. Mm -hmm. That's why the chamfer happens when it goes to a corner and it does uh, the 90 degrees because the wavelength is not as big as it should and this is a 12 millimeter material so if this was a 2.5 inch lens it would be much straighter than than yes. doing that curve we have to remember it's coming out like a like a bell curve so it's it's like swooping up you know wherever it might be in focus the most is where it's going to be the tightest but it gradually comes on an arc it's not like a, a straight up and down line that it cuts through like a saw say yep i, I just oh. want to mention too the fact that um you had the flaming and stuff like I know you were purposely trying to get the flaming, but I thought the way that you got it, it's worth mentioning that that is like just by focusing on the surface of the material is something that people I think would naturally assume was a was a perfectly OK thing to do. Right. Yeah. So, like even though we we did it on purpose to make sure that Miguel got the flare ups and the flames that he wanted, um, you know, it's something that someone who, who maybe didn't know about the technique to sort of, um, you know, focus partway through the material you know, would think was perfectly normal. It's what you would usually do when you're cutting through something, right? So mm -hmm. now there's, yeah, this is a 20 mil acrylic with an 80 watt laser. There is, so this took forever. This has no right to cut through this material this well. <laughs> but now he's using a higher lens, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, no, you can see it's the black lens. It's still the two inch there. I don't know. But I think he's out of focus almost definitely. With wood, why? Because the, the idea with the wet paper towel or masking in general or anything that you put in between the laser and either the, the backing of the material or the material is for uh, heat dispersion, right? Like that's that's the, the whole thing. So the wet paper towel makes so that when the laser hits it is far away enough, it doesn't have enough power to actually burn the towel and it's wet, right? So it kind of holds on to the heat. Mm -hmm. Uh, the water diluting the bath paper that would mark. Okay. So he's, um, he's saying like the steam mixes with the, that gas that's coming off of the acrylic, like you said. Oh, right? okay. I was like, the stream is good, but then he, he yeah. But steam. The steam, yeah, steam. He's, <laughs> it, it dilutes that, um, it dilutes that, uh, that gas that's coming off the, the acrylic. So it's not igniting in the, in the laser. Mm -hmm. it's, it still happens by the way so do you, you you guys know like the the reason why those videos at least they did only show one piece is because if you kept cutting it will flame up right like it, this is an enclosed system the gas doesn't exist just where you're cutting it's gonna go all over the place so the more you cut during like during the day <laughs> the more you cut during the day it will build up gases. Thank I, you, Dan. 
someone told me something like that. Like every like hour or so that you're doing production with acrylics or any other type of material that will uh, release gases that are flammable, just stop and let the laser uh, like the the extractor suck it for like five minutes. You know, after an hour, just hit stop. You know, go drink a coffee and wait a little bit so things are going out, and then you start again. So there's enough time to take out all the gases. You know. Also, um, keep in mind that a lot of our videos, you're seeing lasers in their optimum, uh, like scenario too. <laughs> like we understand that you guys don't necessarily have the exact same extractors that we have. I mean, we've seen customers certainly who have better extractors even than we have big, giant, beautiful machines. Yeah. But um, I mean, that's a great piece of advice. If you're if you're in, you know, it's 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 five minutes, you know, maybe that you can take away just to go have a coffee, like Miguel says, or whatever. But then it'll make all the world of difference for the quality of your of your cuts over a you know full day. Yeah, because honestly, uh, I don't know if I should be talking that. Like, there's some there's some histories, uh, stories actually that are kind of haunting. But it flames up too quickly and too much that if you don't pay attention for even like ten seconds, it's gonna catch a huge fire. That's why I stopped. I don't know if like in the camera it didn't show properly, but I saw like a huge flame. On the bottom and i was like okay i'm not gonna go through with this right so i could damage the lens uh i could damage something even worse so this happens on a daily basis if you're doing big uh, big production uh else do you have a picture that sounds interesting I have a picture of what uh the heart so yeah, yeah. we're having conversations and i'm trying to keep up with it yeah no so um <laughs> LCD mentioned about is keeping the paper towel wet for three hours is the tricky thing with the 20 millimeter acrylic and then I will suggest to putting a water bath underneath it um I would just say yeah we do not recommend sous vide your laser please do not do this um uh it's been a while since Mr. Highball has been in one of the streams right Dan also yeah. no do not leave the street or do not leave the laser unattended while it's running leave it not working that's the point so it has time to off gas and let all the the stuff out yes um was was it Mr. Highvolt that told me that you can ninja engrave a banana? I'm pretty sure it was it, right? The ninja engraving, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you engrave a banana and, and leave it in the fridge or something like that, uh, after a while it's gonna oxidize it and we'll actually show the engraving. Yeah, I think it was him, like two years we ago. Still, we still gotta do that. <laughs> it's still on the list of to dos. <laughs> um, I have to say, um, so. Uh, Hassan mentions too left his Chinese machine for five minutes and it was on fire. Luckily, he could save it. Uh, obviously, I'm glad. Yeah. That, you know, more than anything, that everyone was safe. Just never, for any reason, ever, yeah, ever leave never, your laser unattended when never. it's running. Never, ever, never. ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Uh, no matter what the laser is, Trotec or otherwise. Or oh, who you are. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? exactly. It's no. uh, it happens to everyone. It's that one time. Um, yep. I will. Uh, I will say really quickly. Um, I don't want to divert from what Miguel is saying, but we have a video we want to share with you guys. Uh, do you mind, Miguel, if I take a quick second just to show you guys a cool video? Wait, we're talking about uh, perhaps the James video. A little. Uh, little oh, commercial yeah. yeah. Okay. Break. So, so before that, before that, let me let me announce, and then Please. James is gonna come in. I'll be in BC in ten days. Ten days is that? Is that the, ten? Correct? Ten days you arrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten days. I'm gonna be in Langley office gonna have something cool and i think i think we'll see you have a couple slots in the in the boot camp i don't know if um if james is talking about that in the video or if he's just talking about the open house that's right? all for you so so check up the video with with james about the open house and then we're gonna talk about the boot camp okay let's see let's go hey everybody oh. It's James back in the van with you all. Listen, I got something super cool coming up on March 15th of this year at the Langley British Columbia office of Trotec. We're having an open house. We're gonna have it filled with laser engravers, filled with laser experts here to train you. We're gonna have giveaways. We're gonna have fantastic stuff for you there. I want you guys to all show up. Please look for the banner ads and the videos and the stuff coming in your email telling you all the particulars sign up because there is a limited amount of people allowed there listen you guys are amazing take care
All right. Marketing time. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just a footnote, but the following day, in the March 16th, there's going to be a laser boot camp. Uh, I think we already have like 90% of the signups that we can have. And me, James, Duncan, and I don't know if Trish is going to be there but for the boot camp, but me, James, and Duncan, we're going to give like a six hour boot camp on a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about our why. We're going to do uh, projects right there. We're going to talk individually. You know, we're going to share experiences with everybody that's there. Uh, and it's going to be way more people than I thought. So, you know, uh, that means that we're probably going to do it again soon. And we're also going to be in Calgary in the following week. So That's just right. a little bit of, of marketing there for you guys. But yeah, and we're going to be in the in the open house. We're going to be all of us. Yeah, me, James, Duncan, Trish, and whoever else. We're going to do a little bit of presentations. We're going to do demos on, on other machines. So you can just come in. And for Calgary, it's going to be in in the, in the second week, right? Like in the 20 something. Yeah, it's going to be the 22nd will be the open house. The 23rd will be the boot camp in Calgary. But I just, I mean, if you guys uh, haven't seen the emails yet, the first ones came out this week. Um, you can go to the uh, the bit.ly link that I posted in the chat. Uh, and uh, to answer your question, Doug, uh, you know, keep your eyes out. You might see one for Calgary well, very, very, very shortly. shortly. Yeah. Very, very shortly. Uh, but yeah, no, we've already had some great uh, signups and submissions. So we really appreciate that, you guys. That's fantastic. And I know Miguel is bringing his A game. So, uh, I mean, it's going to be really, really cool. And definitely, you know, we're going to have to have Miguel back in BC, back in Alberta as much as possible. So during summer, know. please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back, back to the laser, back to the laser. Okay. Let's so now that, now that we did, and another thing, you have the T razors that laser Dave showed in the video, but mm -hmm. honestly, you can use anything. And if the mature is thick enough, like Randy was cutting, uh, 20 mil, right? You can use anything. So I'm, I'll actually be using the the circles that I cut, right? I'm going to put in, in four different parts, and that's about it. And I'll be cutting with the same speed, right? And I'm going to do a little bit different. Laser Dave, he used the whole bed with wet paper towel and the razors, and he cut it once. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the wet paper towel after I do the razors, and that's it right with the correct setting let's say because to me there's very little reason why you should be pushing your machine that much like honestly if you're having all those jobs of 20 mil half an inch you have a need what machine maybe sent to upgrade right you should be making enough money that you know with the roi that you should upgrade and you would be making more money right it, the machines were not made to do that um but I'll, I'll put them here. But by the way, like I, I've pushed eight millimeters in a Rage at 50, so. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, it's it's fine. Um, One thing I would say too is that um, like if you are, so if you're trying to replicate the, the technique that Laser Dave showed in there, you can also do sort of like a vacuum um, like I think in the video he shows, he covers his entire laser bed yes. with yes. tape and yes. only cuts open the area where the paper towel is going to be. So yes. the, the suction underneath it is as powerful as he can possibly get it, which also helps to hold the, the paper towel in place. Right. Yes. So it's not yep. blowing yep. around in a perfect world, <laughs> in a perfect world. Yes. That's how you should be doing. But honestly, yep. if it was me, I wouldn't be doing half of that. Right. Just out of pure pleasance. And I, I, I like to work as efficient as I can be. So in this case, but that for quality is amazing, right? If you're doing one offs and you need like great quality, that is the best way to do it. 100%. So now I'm going to use the exact same, same, uh, settings, same settings, just so you guys can see the, the difference that leaving room for the suction helps, right? But it will still flame. I'm almost sure it will still flame. So you're, you're no. focused to the surface again. Yes. Okay. So uh, I think this one is over. Let me send another one. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Ruby did um, it. Ruby did it to me. So Doug, that's a very good point. That's if you have the 360 and the 500. The 300 does not have the downdraft. Um, yes. It's true, but the uh, the paper towel because it's not very heavy. If you have the air assist on and all that sort of stuff, I mean, you know, it, it depends certainly on on um, what you're using and how you're setting it up. But regardless, if you're cutting, um, you know, accentuating the vacuum on the table by covering up, you know, the remainder of the, the, the suction is, uh, is always a good, you know, kind of go-to, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. So the flare ups, a little bit are, of flare ups, not yeah, quite as bad as before though. They're minimal, but there are still cracks. Yes. They are also kind of minimal, but they're there. Right. And I see some flames. Man, that's running slow. Yeah, that's running slow. But I could oh, go if I'm. See, did you guys see that? Okay, this is this is ah. Then yep. just... right at the end there, absolutely. Yeah, right at the end. But that was just one cut. It's still flame, right? Even though the edges look beautiful. So let me go back. Uh, see what people are talking. Try J JC fourteen. What? What is going on? What is going on in the chat? Like. Uh, I'm not sure on that particular one. That's if you but, have the 360 and the 500. The 300 yeah. have the downdrafts. He was talking about the downdrafts, but the, the um, yeah. Why JC14? Randy, <laughs> illuminate us, please. If there's something you know, Randy, that we don't know, we want to know. Yeah, it. <laughs> please. <laughs> so clearly, that was quite, quite dangerous. But you see, it didn't have enough flare-ups, and you thought, okay, it should be fine. But no, at the end, it. It flamed like hard. Yeah. Simply because it took en enough time for the gas to build up, laser hit it, boom. Yep. So it's not that hard to to make that mistake. So now I'm gonna send a little bit quicker. I did the test and I'm gonna do it two point two percent speed. And I remember that this was decent. It did a, a good a good cut. Okay, come on. Okay. Suspense, man. Yeah, no, no, it's just Ruby. <laughs> so Try now, control uh, 14. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's why. Okay. So, yeah, now I'm doing 2% speed. And no flare ups, but I can see the smoke, right? I can see the gas building up. Yep. But no far ups, no anything. It was beautiful. It was perfect. That's the correct setting. And it cut through entirely. Right? Yeah. So now. And you had purposely turned down the speed in order that um, yes. you would kind of solicit some extra flare ups and things. Yeah. And here I can see some striations. That's POP explosion for Benny. I feel like they lift up the whole sheet, lift up the whole job. Yep. That, that does happen. It's now, scary as heck, too, when you get one of those. Those pops, the oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it. I probably yeah. not. Like, there's a line. Uh, there's a line in here in the middle. You can kind of see it. Yeah, turn it back towards. Yeah, right there. You can see yeah. it there, right between your two fingers, kind of right in the middle. Yeah, there's a line there, and that line is because that's where, where the laser started and finished. Most people would try to to make sure that during the during the actual uh, design process, the line will go over the circle, so it doesn't do that, but that's not necessary. What you actually need in this case is since you're cutting something so thick, is a 2.5 inch lens. You have a bigger uh, dot size, and with the bigger dot size, this thing doesn't happen, right? Or at least it happens in such a small way that's barely perceptive. Yes. So, and it makes it easier it's to It's much focus. better to be cutting these things. Sorry, go ahead. Do what? Well, I was just going to ask you, does it also with the... Oh, yeah. And the... this is one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Does the larger lens make yeah, it possible... You go, with... Don. You go, Don. Does the, the two and a half inch make it easier to focus halfway through as well? So you don't have quite so much in the way of the kind of like, um, you know, the indication, like the bowing of the um, the kind of focal yep. point of the laser? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And this is one of the reasons as well that when you're cutting... God, I have it here, but I don't know if it's going to show as good as it should when you're cutting 
uh, on the 2000, for, uh, for instance, or the 500, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of that problem because they use a 5 inch lens. Right? These ones are not completely circular, so it's a bad, uh, bad example. But they have a 5 inch lens, so the dot size is much bigger. That doesn't happen as, as often as it would on a smaller dot size, which is great for engraving, but when it comes to cutting acrylic, that might happen. So that's actually people are asking that exact question, Miguel. So like, what about a, a four inch lens? So, so four inch lens are not, at least on a speedy, they're not really made for cutting, right? They're too far from the focus point. The speedies don't have enough power as an SP. So it would be too far off that the dot size is going to be too big. You're going to lose a lot of power. So if, even if you have 120 watt, there is a certain limit where, because it's this, it's like, it's, I mean, it's double what you have right four, now. Yeah. Laser, it's yeah. like four inch, if not more from the, uh, from the actual nozzle. Right. So you lose a lot of power traveling that distance. It works. Yes. If you, especially if you're cutting something small, like three millimeter, and if you don't want its striations, that's great. That's yes. one of the, the reasons why, uh, James talks about that. Uh, you can also turn off the air assist or, or make it less. You know, turn down the air assist, especially on the 360s and the 400s. They are easy because you have the, the actual, uh, how, how does it call it? The thing that turns back and forth. I forgot. The oh, name. yeah, the little, um, oh, no, no, I forget it. Yes, uh, yes, yes, I know what you mean, though. The little, like, um, yeah, yeah, there's a the little adjustment thing. thing. Yeah, the adjustment <laughs> thing the that thing. In increases the air assist and decreases the air assist. They are uh, near the laser head. On the 300s and the, the 100s, I think they are in the side panels. Yes. So it's a little bit more complicated to to uh, change that, but this is how we would go. Yeah, the valve. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Jeez, uh, <laughs> do you need a job? <laughs> uh, if you're doing uh, smaller acrylics, thinner acrylics, you should be doing that, right? With the four-inch lens, it could look good. But four-inch lenses are made for engraving in odd places, like inside of a cup or you know, on a basketball, like we have some here. Yeah, you know, and these are the rotary cool. tool to give you that huge um, spacing in between the like the um, the um, I can't think of what that's called, but the the Z added, axis? the what? um what are our the clearance? Sorry, the clearance to okay. give you extra clearance if you're doing like a rotary object that's going to have strange shapes or stuff. Yep. It'll still give you the huge you know um, it'll enable you to engrave more easily across rounded objects and rounded surfaces. Exactly. Um, I had a quick question for you here, Miguel, too. I didn't want to miss it before it disappears. Yeah. Just right. really quickly, uh, Marquita, Marquita Lewis. I have a speedy 380 watt when she gets a three millimeter trope glass acrylic. The sides with the laser cut, the acrylic is sticky. Is that normal? Um, in my experience, cutting with acrylic, it can be. Acrylic is one of the best candidates for cleaning after cutting. Um, the the plastics will definitely get sticky. So things like the lamacoids, the trolleys, those get really sticky 100% um, acrylics can uh, far less uh, frequently than the plastics ever do um, do you know by any chance uh, what the acrylic is if, if you put the name of the um, the parts yeah. in the chat there maybe we could we could kind of help you out a little bit more but um, like uh, it could be extruded acrylic and she's cutting with the huge frequency and she's not using proper assist that's the sure. only thing that comes to my mind. Like I've never seen acrylic being sticky. I mean, they're hot, but they don't stick to my hand. You know, that would be dangerous. Actually, imagine me taking out something that I just cut on a laser, and they stick to my fingers, and they're really <laughs> hot. And you know, I. Uh... Um, Dan actually mentioned about that. So when would you? I know you touched on this kind of a little bit at the start of the stream, but uh, when would you go for a higher frequency as opposed to a, a lower frequency? Any material that dissipates heats really well, you go with a higher frequency. That's it. So would you go as low as you can? uh metals if you have a fiber laser you graving you turn that thing up as much as you can especially stainless steel 20,000 you know uh frequency acrylics they work well within 2k to 12k mm. extruded a little bit lower because they are not as good as cast when it comes to like the co2 cutting process yep but it's usually within that uh area there Okay. And Jurgen mentions just uh, very much what you were speaking about before to use the overcut. So to pass by where that initial entry and exit point for the cut is, yeah. uh, they mentioned how it's really common in metal cutting just to get mm -hmm. the cleaner start and stop. So you don't have that, that 
very mm -hmm. defined, you know, mm -hmm. stripe through kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, for sure. But that is depending uh, on the designer, not the machine. True. Right? Yeah. So if you don't know how to do that, that's, uh, you, you can kind of. Our next uh, cram session. Yeah. <laughs> make a, a, a kind of remedy kind of thing but it's oh god i've been watching james there and i was like wait james is here no it's just a his the face video. on the video yeah yeah uh, <laughs> um so markita says the air is turned on are you sure it's working yes so um you can feel it you can feel it if you put the the the, the finger below the, nozzle. the same thing it's like powder that melts against and it becomes sticky um, so the, the trolleys definitely has that. The trolleys, because yeah, of the trolleys. nature of the um, the nature of how it's made, the trolleys will always be sticky. Trying to get uh, lamacoids to cut and not be sticky is really really hard to do. Yeah. Um, though, I mean, we've tried a few things. We have some hacks and stuff on the on the YouTube channel. That would be something you know, yeah. we'll have to we'll have to tackle. The lamacoids lamacoids you have to be very specific with settings for it to not be as sticky as it can. Yes, and not to like bow or you know do some of that stuff bubble up um as far as the color gloss black so like miguel said i would double check that your air assist is working properly provided that it is um i would also look at potentially um adjusting your settings a little bit but yeah it, using it, you know, the a, matrix there, to test a lot of different settings and see if they stay yeah there's like it's uh because truly is limit quotes it's not yeah straight up acrylic but in when it comes to the troll glass. The troll glass. Uh, they, yeah, they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't do that. Something is wrong. And since we don't know your settings exactly, it's kind of hard for me to kind of imagine. So the first thing that comes to my mind is either the RSS is not working properly or it's very low, which is fine in some like types of cuttings. But if it's actually still melting during, like after it finishes, you should be taking a look at that because again if it sticks to your hand it's gonna burn right this is a career like we're talking about so it's doug uh, mentions a, a good point that that i think we're gonna bring up here in a second is the nose cone size um if you're cutting um you're kind of always i mean again i would go to miguel you know you have the the sort of thicker fatter nose cone that you can put on or you have the thinner nose comb that you can put on that's going to direct the air far more sort of in a pointed very focused kind of way um each one has its its benefits and its use cases but uh you know changing out which nose comb you're using or making sure you are using a nose comb when cutting is another thing to sort of take into consideration this um, honestly this is the only nose comb that you will use for cutting there it is because yeah, that's the, the, the narrow one is, yeah the narrow one because the air is coming out of it will be you know perfect yeah uh, you only use the the wider nose comb, emo, in my opinion, when you're cutting acrylics and you're having a lot of distraction and you don't want to go slower, right? That's the only part because then the the air assist only kind of serves to not let the gas build up as much. Yeah. But it will not have uh it will not have a much of an impact as coming inside the the whole process and making sure that the acrylic resolidifies as quick as it does when okay i'm going full nerdy again but if you go back to the, to the last cram session you understand better what i'm saying but basically the acrylic while you, it, it melts it resolidifies so quickly and there's a gas build up while you do that so if you have this nose comb it will make that as fast as it can right so it will cool down the acrylic and it will solidify so that's why you see these radiations when you don't want these radiations but you want to keep going fast you go with a wider nose comb so it doesn't flame up but you maintain your speed yeah uh just a really quick stop here on uh urban etching so so michael mentions that the trolley smells worse too than just the straight acrylic i'm gonna be honest with you i, I think they're both pretty <laughs> scuffed they're both pretty bad <laughs> they're neither one is my favorite um but if you're getting a lot of acrylic smell um or a lot of sort of off gassing and stuff maybe take a look at your filter system also. Just make sure that your filters are still clean, that they're working properly. Um, we had to switch the filters in our showroom this week, which is why it's fresh in my mind that we, you know. But some, sometimes there's no way around it. Like it, it's, totally. not, it's not a, a laser problem. For instance, this thing here that I engraved, it was pretty quick. It took what, a minute and 50 seconds, two minutes and something, mm. the whole sheet. Wow. It smelled terrible for an hour. 
Like mm-hmm. nobody could walk past the demo room. I was talking to Lev on the phone and I heard him yelling at me. Y'all like, please shut those doors because it smells like acrylic in the office. Yep. The smell was going down into the office. Like I had to open all of those doors to the warehouse. I, so, so during 2020, I used that machine. Like I was by myself in the office cutting face masks with that machine. So whole, again, same thing as Miguel's got there. Like the whole bed covered in uh, PET face mask plastics. And it reeked. It was brutal because the... Again, because it's an open bed, right? There's not that lid to contain any of the gas, any of the smell, any of the anything. Um, so it, you end up with that that very strong, strong, strong smell. Yeah. And now I got to do the last testing so you guys can see. Let's do it. And in my opinion, this, what I just did, right, with the razors, this is the production type of thing. Mm-hmm. If you're in a high production setting and you want to keep going, this is uh, how you do it. However, keep in mind, like Randy was saying, like he uses the whole the whole bed full of uh, what wet paper towel. Keep in mind that that will be gas spewed up even when you are raised. Even when you're raised, so cutting MDF can be super sticky on the honeycomb bed. Yes, it can. <laughs> There's no way around it. Oh man, I have a story about rubber and <laughs> venting. That you guys wouldn't believe it, but I am not so sure that I can say these things live. Uh, Do I know that story? I think I know that story. <laughs> no, you don't know the story. Did you no? see uh, the the gantry picture? I don't think you saw. I just I, think, I, I so. think it just showed Lev. Now I'm interested. <laughs> and he's like, oh god, I was like, yep. So keep in mind, guys. Anything like like Avery's right. Anything with glue in the material, MDF is another one. It's gonna be sticky. Are you waiting down the paper towel? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, hey, I'm, I'm not even going to do much. I'm just going to put water in my hand. Yep. And, you know, sprinkle in the paper towel. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Very just scientific. Because, yeah, very, very science stuff. <laughs> because that's the type of person I am. Yep. And I'm just going to put beneath it. So, Laser Dave put four layers, right? Something like that? Yep. I'm just going to put one, just so you guys see. Efficient. Yeah. Again, this is just because I'm cutting one. If you're cutting multiple of these, please use more. Use like two to four. And have a, a water spray jet to make them even. So, yeah. I keep doing these things that I shouldn't do. I don't know why. As long just, as we keep telling people that don't, like... Yeah. Don't do don't do as Donnie don't does but, basically. But this is kind of this is kind of good, right? Like, I think it's kind of educational because it's better for me to show you in a controlled environment and that I actually know what I'm doing than you discovering by yourself while your machine catches fire. So, and that's why I wanted to mention earlier that like what you did with focusing something to the surface is a perfectly reasonable thing to do for a lot of cutting. So like. You know, if this happens to you, don't be discouraged like this does. <laughs> it's not, you know, what you did is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. It's just we want to show you, see, you know, hopefully you don't ruin your material. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to push the laser. And again, this is fairly simple. I just put the acrylic on the bed. I put the white paper towel beneath it, and I'm just going to hit it. Now, the last cut didn't have... Yep. It didn't have any reflections. This was good, like real good. So I'm just gonna hit. That's play. the ones with the pins below. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. The pins. So it had no problem whatsoever. This one, let's see. This is just one towel, right? It has some flares, but the flares are gonna hit the paper. So let me see. Like this one is up there with the sandblasting where I still can't believe that it yeah how well it works given Yeah, unfortunately I cannot show you, but yep, it has no problems here. It's actually quite quite good. There's no chamfer at all. The the edges are really straight. Nice. This is this is really good. So it's as good as the other one. The difference is that you have to well wet a paper. Right? However, this one had flares, so as you can see. In my opinion, if you can make these things work within your product, uh, production pipeline, these are great. Individually, they're great as well. 
but I would prefer the paper towel. It's like, in my opinion, it's more reliable if you just want to do one. Especially if you're doing thinner acrylic, the razors don't work as good because the acrylic will bend. It will bend. If you're cutting the whole bed, after five minutes, three minutes, the whole thing is going to be bent. So you will lose focus, which would mean you're not using the airsis properly, which would mean gas built up, which would mean flames. Losing quality, you know? yeah. No, flames. Losing quality is the least of your problems. So <laughs> just keep you you're muted, Don. You're muted yourself. Sorry, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, no, I'm you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> so I was gonna say though, the other side of it too is just that um um it's kind of tricky because there's no sort of one perfect setup. It it really does, Miguel's right, it depends on your job. But um if you are doing a full bed, um you know stuff like this really works best i think when you're cutting something really thick right is that a fair assessment so like yeah yeah if you're doing the three mil what would you recommend is it is it the pins is it you know you won't see quite as much of a trouble because it's a thinner acrylic I, I, cut, I, or? I wouldn't do the pins with three mil okay mostly because of bending because if i'm doing a full bad i'm basically risking a good chunk of it on the fact that it will go out of focus right this is not uh me trying to assume things it will go out of focus if you're cutting the whole bed, you will be applying heat all over the thing. And let me, what is this? So you want it to be stable, right? In the cutting bed. Then you put the, the white paper towel beneath it. That's that's what I would do. If you're cutting thick acrylic, then I will either use both. Or if you are in a high production kind of thing, I would just use the razors. I don't think we ever, ever use white paper towel on this thing. <laughs> One, because we don't have enough paper for that. Yeah. And, you know, we just, because the whole uh, exhaust system there is a downdraft. Yes. So we just raise the acrylic and that's it. Right? And again, it down. keep in mind with a machine like that, because it is open air, like there, there is a, a good, you know, powerful suction system. You can see the black hose there going to the, the head on the gantry. Like there's a powerful suction system on that thing, but it can only do so much. It's really only affecting where you're cutting right that second. So yep. It's working mostly just to clear any smoke or debris away from the laser head as opposed to yeah you know this is why it was smelling so bad is because we we're doing engraving not cutting if it was cutting it wasn't going to be that much yeah. because it was going to be sucked down but since it was just engraving everything was going up and well the machine is open right but <laughs> no, i just get to yeah. too engraving on the 2000 is not easy to do it's not really built for it but uh, yeah it was a kiss cut it was a kiss cut nice so here, like my, my final notes is it depends on what you want. Right? If you can kind of open hands of your striations, you can basically do anything. If you're if you're going to do signs that nobody's going to actually see them up close, you can go with the perfect settings for uh, for power and speed and not to use either. Right? If you're flaring up too much and it's giving cracks on the acrylic, raise them. But if they are too thin, use the wet paper towel. This is basically my my go-to process. Now, if you don't want striations, that would also depend on how much production you want to have, right? Because the the kind of golden bullet, right? Golden bullet, silver bullet. I don't know. It's it's a bullet. Golden gun, yeah. silver bullet. Yeah, something like that. Worlds, really. The 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 answer that solves the problems for everybody is go slower like much lower, but you're losing money when you go that soft, right? So you either put a bigger nozzle or you go out of focus or you use a four inch lens. There's a few options there, but they will always have their own drawbacks. There's no perfect solution. It all depends on what you want to do, right? Yep. And I'll be honest with you guys. I thought I had a third thing to, to talk about acrylics. I probably have, but I'm not going to do another crim session about acrylics anytime soon. So next Grim session will be about something else. I don't know exactly what. You guys choose, right? Lately, I've been testing so many weird materials, and I would love to show it to you, but some of them are proprietary, and yes. I can't. So <laughs> it's basically your idea. What do you guys would want to see? Uh, let us know. And the next few Grim sessions will be about that. Who knows? It's, it's going to be lemon cords, woods, anodized aluminum, fiber laser engraving, you know? 
Yeah. If you want to see that. Rotary engraving. Um, yeah. Now that I'm here, we can stuff. do anything. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's I think um, one I would really like to talk to you guys about at some point. I don't know if we can make it into a crime session, but I'd be interested if you guys would like to see one too about um, Miguel addressing ways to speed up production. So addressing with pr typical production questions too, because I can see right there from Nabil who's talking about, um, you know, having a large amount to produce and, and wasting time. And um, it's an area that I know Miguel has some experience. So, I mean, who knows, like he says, absolutely oh, yeah. we want to hear from you guys. Uh, th this is not, I, I don't know if this is uh, major knowledge, but uh, before I came to Trotec, I used to work in production. So that's how I started with the lasers. It was like high production. I was doing 1200 pieces of whatever a day. So it was a lot. I was all the time with the machine running nonstop. So, uh, and it ended up before I left to come to Trotec, I was doing 1200, but when I came in at the daily production was around a hundred. So, and they didn't hire a second operator. I was the only one using it and I only had a speedy 300 and I made the production go up by almost 12 times. So it's, it has a lot of intricacies and I'm going to talk about that in the bootcamp. So if you're interested, you can come back. No. Nope. Yeah, that's actually uh, that's a great segue. Um, uh, in the bootcamp, part of you know what I think Miguel wants to touch off, and I'll and I'll hand it over to you. But um, you know, it's an opportunity not only for hands-on training with the laser, but then at the bootcamp, I think you're also going to do some talking about um, like production ROI, um, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing, right? I mean, yeah. especially um, because it's a case by case thing, so it's kind of yes. nice to have multiple minds in the same space talking about what they do and how they do it and trying to improve that you know canada is a huge country so people are not cannibalizing each other when it comes to to this so it, everyone has their own area you know a northern bc east a southeast bc whatever and they they do their own thing so it's kind of nice to have this uh, experience sharing and knowing what they do how they could improve it and it's not just about using the laser and machine settings and things like that but actually handling the material what do you, what you could do in general because handling the material and the the whole manual part for me was roughly 30 percent of my daily time in the production company that was before mm -hmm. so making that better was also a a thing that i put inside the whole pipeline right to improve the production can we say that what material you're working with like is it okay to say you were using big um, yes tools? uh was tools fabric uh, um acrylic felt whoa sometimes i would engrave uh wood cu cubes so that one was tricky that one was really tricky yep because i had to use jigs i had to engrave in six sides and they were not cut to size so they're not perfect i think they were resended <laughs> cubes so there's a whole trickiness to it oh and they actually had to look good yeah uh and there were some some extra things that that we did uh, i think foil there was there's some of the cuts that we had to do but like i said it started with 100 a day and by the time i left i was doing 1200 a day right so w once i left i remember that i had to train people three people had to be in my place right to, to be <laughs> operating the machines because they didn't know that much uh so i was like okay so this is how you do this is what you should be doing but the the pipeline of the, the whole thing was there you know when i came yep. in nobody had an actual plan of attack so this is important for you like handling the material after you cut it taking it out cleaning popping it off this whole thing costs time so yeah we're we gonna talk about that absolutely and you'll have james there too who does yep. have some background in roi laser all that sort of good stuff obviously uh, yeah. And then the open house too. Don't forget the open house on Tuesdays. Uh, will oh, yeah. be Tuesday the fifteenth. Uh, they'll have the doors open at nine a.m., um, nine to five, or basically until the last person leaves. But there'll be lunch on both days. Yeah, um, <laughs> until the, the until people actually uh, get tired of seeing my face. <laughs> I'll be there. Say, so if you, yeah, if you want to meet the, me in BC, just come in there. The boot camp is also very limited in terms of seating left. I think we will do another session because I know uh, they've been popular in the past. They'll be popular going forward. But uh, if you guys are interested. Uh, again, I'll put the, the bit.ly link here in the chat, but definitely uh, come out and see us. Um, I mean, I won't get to be there, but uh, you can come out and meet Miguel, who is uh, far better at this than I am anyhow. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully, Montreal, I can I can speak English going there. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, look, and, I mean, we haven't uh, we haven't set a specific date, but I know that there's going to be Montreal and Ontario coming up in the not too distant future as well. Uh, we are going to be at the Sign Expo at the end of next month as well. Uh, the no, pardon me, the Imprint Expo at the end of uh, April Imprint, in Ontario yeah. as well. Miguel and I will both be there, so uh, that is going to be uh, a really cool opportunity. If any of you guys are going to be there. Um, we're going to have an event calendar going up on our website soon, so you'll be able to check us out. Uh, yes, uh, and when we do the open house, we actually, uh, I don't know if, can, can, I, can I talk about the GoldenEye? Yeah, yeah, I think you can. Are you, are you sure? No, You're the but, marketing director. But <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be there, so, okay. you know. Where, in, in the imprint shop? In BC. Oh, so, the, no, 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 BC is just run on Ruby. Oh, yeah, even it though did. it has, but they sent one with. Oh, the, that one is here. I well, you'll be able to see Run and Ruby for sure, at least. Okay, <laughs> so I, I'll keep I'll keep a secret. You guys will know later this month, probably. As soon as we, as soon as we can. Yeah, we're excited to show you. Yeah. Okay, so we're good to go. Absolutely. A minute, yeah, an hour and five minutes. You Thank see, you all this one again. Was it's, I mean, it was perfect. I, I definitely can't recommend enough. Go check out the uh, the previous cram session that Miguel did for us uh, on our YouTube channel. You can always leave questions on the YouTube channel. Always, uh, there's, uh, I mean, we, we do our best to get back to them. It takes us a little while sometimes, but we do always try our best. Um, I'm going to show the uh, the James video one more time here for anybody so you can scribble down either the link or the uh, the dates or anything like that. Uh, get a hold of us if you have any questions. YouTube at trotechlaser.ca. Uh, you can always reach out to uh, Miguel and I through that website. And uh, yeah, I guess we will see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Go. <laughs> Don, this is weird. Hit flight. There we go. There we go. Hey, everybody. It's James back in the van with you all. Listen, I got something super cool coming up on March 15th of this year the Langley British Columbia office of Trotech. We're having an open house. We're gonna have it filled with laser engravers, filled with laser experts, here to train you. We're gonna have giveaways. We're gonna have fantastic stuff for you there. I want you guys to all show up. Please look for the banner ads and the videos and the stuff coming in your email telling you all the particulars. Sign up because there is a limited amount of people allowed there. Listen. You guys are amazing. Take care.